let's do the recap and then we'll get into some news. Uh, so again, I just hope that everyone's having a beautiful day. Uh, I'm having a beautiful day so far. My day is fantastic. Uh, as of, you know, 10, 12 in the morning. I mean, anything could happen that could fuck it up. But uh, so far, the day is pretty well, uh, doing pretty well, rather. And so I'm going to talk about the protests uh, in Elizabeth City. Day 26, folks. Day motherfucking 20 motherfucking 6. So I want to provide a little bit of a news update for day 27. So we were planning something for today uh, involving taking up space at uh, county commissioner meetings. And they, uh, they <laughs> the county commissioners have decided to uh, not allow that to occur uh, as they made their meeting private this morning. So that's uh, that's kind of a situation. So we'll get into that later and we'll, we'll I'll figure out what's going to happen later today. Uh, but that's pretty funny. All right. So day 26 uh, took place on Sunday. Um, on Sunday, we usually have higher turnout um, because like people do like events that they, you know, prepare for all week. So, for example, uh, someone will say like, you know, this Sunday, 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 Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Um and, uh, and so Sunday, you know, we had a rally, uh, where you had a bunch of people speak and then you had a march. Uh, actually it was the march and then the rally, which I disagree with. Personally, I think having a rally and then a march is much better because you get people energized and then they go through the city and they fuck shit up, uh, with their voices, I should say. Um, and so that's why I, like, I was very confused that the march was before the rally. So it's very interesting. Um. But either way, uh, we had a bunch of speakers at the rally and they gave us some interesting information, but we did have the march first. And so this is a photo of me. Uh, I'm beautiful. Thank you. I know that already. Uh, but feel free to continue uh, saying so in the chat that I am beautiful. Uh, and so here we are. We're setting up to march. We're preparing in this little, you know, captured uh, moment in time. We are prepping. Uh, we are, this is preparation, you know, station. Uh, so then we take up the road. We're on the road. And again, I want to say that there's a pretty large amount of people, uh, especially compared to the last couple of days. And so that's pretty awesome. I love when we have the larger turnout. I just wish that we had a larger turnout every single day. <laughs> but, you know, again, people work and stuff. So it's like, what are you going to do, right? Uh, so we get on Airing House um, to basically today or yesterday, rather, we march from the Waterfront Park uh, over to Airing House over to Perry Street, which is uh, where Andrew Brown was murdered. And so that was the idea. And then we walk back around uh, to the waterfront uh, from Perry Street. Uh, but we did take Airing House for a bit. Uh, Taco Bell uh, lost some business, unfortunately. People had to settle for lesser fast food, you know, like uh, McDonald's or something. You know, they just had to make that horrible decision. Um, but anyway, so we're here. Um, we get a bunch of people. Again, it's just crazy how on Sunday we have a bunch of motherfuckers and then every other day, like, you know, they're mysteriously disappeared. Now, I understand people have work. Uh, I understand. But either way, we have a really good amount of people. If we could get this amount of people every single day, like the, we did for the first week up until the curfew, that'd be pretty amazing. So anyway, we turn here. Uh, and as you can see, once the street gets smaller, this is also where the residential neighborhoods are. So we have a bunch of people that meet us here um, as well. And then so at this point, uh, someone has an idea to break into like multiple different groups so that the cops are not, you know, as as coordinated. And so I get a little a capture, a little bit of moments of this, you know, I'm in the back here. I'm trying to trying to get the scoops. You know what I'm saying? So then we uh, take a moment of breaking at the site of the crime uh, where Andrew Brown was murdered. And uh, so a, a couple people have some words uh, of wisdom, including that, of course, there are no good cops. I wanted to say that part. Um, you know, I, I appreciate when uh, we have these moments where everyone's just kind of standing still and people like pass the, the, the megaphone and people just start speaking because uh, it's really good. And then you have some people that will say amazing things like, again, there's no good cops and there's no reason why police have military style equipment. Like, what are they going to war? Are they fucking, are they trying to like capture terrorists or something? Maybe they think they are in their little fantasy world. But again, there's no such thing as a good cop. So we go from the scene of the murder uh, back toward the waterfront park. Um, and again, uh, as we're walking through residential neighborhoods, we do pick up a lot of people. And by the time we get to the waterfront, um, you know, there's just like, you can see noticeably a larger group of people here. Uh, like if you scroll up and look where the march started, 
right? You'll see a decent amount of people, but if you scroll down, you see more people. And so that's the shit that I like to see. That's my shit. Like when you see more and more people gaining along the way. Uh, and so then people start speaking. Uh, and the only thing that was really worth of uh, noting uh, was that city councilman Gabriel Adkins said that police officers of the sheriff's uh, office department have been peeing on his property. They have specifically, like he's got video evidence and he said he's going to release the tapes. Now I hope that they are the full tapes, but he's going to release that. Uh, very soon of sheriff's deputies just pissing all over his property uh his postulation for that is because he has been one of the most uh you know vocal city council members uh which i mean i i guess is true uh maybe um but we had uh you know a couple other city council members that said a lot of really good things a lot of very powerful remarks i wish they would do more as far as in their elected official position um, you know, but, you know, going on the microphone once a week and saying some cool stuff, that's pretty good. Uh, but again, the sheriff's department has been uh, uh, harassing them. They, they've been specifically going out of their way to harass the black members of the city council. And like, it's just, it's disgusting. It's gross. And it's, you know, it just goes to show, uh, because, okay, so let me, let me, let me give you the story. So Gabriel Atkins gets on the microphone and says, um, you know, <laughs> he says, I want to read like a general statute before I tell the story. And he starts reading the general statute for public urination and defecation. And so I'm confused. I have no idea where this is going. I think, you know, my first thought is, oh, is the city councilman going to like say that someone, you know, at a protest like peed somewhere and that that's a problem or something? I don't know what's going on. And then he starts to say that the sheriffs are pissing on his fucking property because uh, he, ha he has property, right? You know, just throwing that out there. Um, was council member, M member Michael Brooks there? I believe we had Horton um, and uh, Adkins speak uh, of the city council. Um, uh, we also had uh, Councilman Kim, some, I, I forget their name. I'm so sorry. Um, but they were also speaking as well. I don't think Michael Brooks was there, but he has been, uh, you know, he has been there in a couple instances. So, you know, but there you go. I just, I, my personal thing is if you're on the city council, like it's your literal job, right? That's my thing. It's like, is this, if I really were on the city council, hypothetically, I would be attending. I mean, I am attending every single day of protesting regardless, but if I, if it were my job to represent the city, I would be there every single day. Uh, Ken Spence. Okay. Um, I, that's my thing. Uh, that, just throwing that out, and that's just my personal persuasion. Uh, but either way, so we have this rally. People get everyone fired up, and uh, that's good. Except you know, like you know, the rally was over, and then people like chilled out and like slowly poured out over the next like a bit of time. Um, and so again, uh, a lot of people are planning on occupying the uh, county commissioner meeting that's going to take place today. And this is one of the things that, you know, I want to say uh, on when it comes to organizing. Uh, I think that there are purposefully people, like, for example, if you're going to say something in this public fashion, like, hey, we're going to occupy a city commissioner meeting, they're going to change the rules. That's just how it's going to go. And so I think that the reason why they said that they were going to do that was to bait the city commissioner or the, the county commissioners into changing the meeting uh, as positive propaganda for the protest movement. And that's how I perceive it. And so again, I want to say that this the city the count I'm sorry the county commissioner and it is important that the city does have some supportive members of the city like the city council there are some supportive members the county is the problem because the county is gerrymandered in such a fashion where like almost every single official is like a Republican racist right you have the uh, judge that was signing off on the orders who was saying that George Zimmerman should have uh, you know like killed Trayvon Martin ten times over because he was so justified right. You have these people that are just absolutely fucking out of control. They're crazy people uh, like that are judges or they're county commissioners that are fucking, you know, like the sheriffs, you know, sheriff of Pasquotank County. Um, and so like them constantly fucking with us. And now I also want to say that the COVID restrictions now, whether or not I agree or disagree with them being lifted, the COVID restrictions have been lifted. So these people have been using the COVID restrictions as like their little like, you know, oh, sorry, you know, there's a pandemic going on. Uh, you know, North Carolina rules can't have a, you know, but now that the restrictions are lifted, then making the meeting private, right? Like, you know, I, it, it's just positive propaganda as far as I'm concerned for the protest movement um, of them constantly doing everything they can to fuck with us. And I want to say that again, uh, for those of you that are watching, the role of uh, the county in this instance, right? The role, their jobs, 
right? You might be thinking, oh, you're the county commissioner, you're the fucking, you know, you're the district attorney or judge. Your your job is to, you know, rule or, you know, decide things fairly based on the fact. No, 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 that is not. I, I understand, like, God bless your soul. That is not their job, actually. Their job is to be there and be as oppositional as possible to progress, right? So if someone does something that they disagree with, they're going to throw the motherfucking book at that guy's bitch ass, right? They're going to go away. They're going to lock the key. If someone is black, they're done for. They're gone, right? But if someone is white and they say commit a crime, if someone is, say, a white cop and they commit a crime, like let's hypothetically say someone uh, rolled into a neighborhood on the back of a pickup truck with an assault weapon and murdered someone in a school zone, hypothetically, of course, that would never happen, right? But if that were to happen and they were white and they were an officer, then of course, again, the role of these people, like the district attorney, like these judges, like all the people that work for the county, their role is to protect their own. It's the good old boy system of governance where it's like the people in the crew, they're good to go. Nothing will ever happen to them. The people outside the crew, throw the motherfucking book at them. We don't need them. And so you need to understand, and I really, 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 like if you take away anything from this show in any capacity, I need you to understand that the role of government, especially small town local government, the role of government is not to govern, but to obstruct, right? Because they've already got the system in place that they want and that they need, right? They've already got the Jim Crow style system in place where they can oppress certain groups of people, steal their money, tax them unfairly, throw them into the criminal justice system unfairly to just steal their money and to put them on watch lists and to ruin their lives, right? We, this is the, this is the system that we live in. This is the system that we live under. So why would you need to govern if the gov if the governing has already been done? So the role of city councils, the role of counties, the role of sheriff's departments is not to govern, but it's to obstruct any form of progress uh, that would ever uh, amount in any capacity, right? So again, you have decent people on the city council, Okay, well, they can't do anything because the county. Oh, okay, let's say hypothetically we have decent, decent people in the county. All right, well, they can't do anything because of the state legislature. All right, let's say we have decent people in the state legislature. Well, they can't do anything because of like weird filibuster rules. All right, so let's say we have decent, you know, numbers and there's no filibuster rules. Sorry, the governor can do this. All right, so there's always an excuse. Oh, the governor is on our side. Okay, well, now the president's not on it. Right, so there's always, like, you have to understand, there's the form of government in the United States is so that there's always another party that can accept responsibility for something not happening. So, like, let's look at what happened when it comes to releasing the tape of Andrew Brown being murdered, right? At first, right, the sheriff's department said, oh, uh, we want transparency, we can't release the tape because we need an investigation and the state... Bureau of Investigation, the SBI is going to come in and investigate, so we can't release the tape yet. And then the SBI was like, uh, actually, you can release the tape. It's no big deal. We actually have, we have no power over that. So the uh, sheriff is actually the sole arbiter of whether or not the tape can be released. And, you know, also a judge can, and like, you know, they, they can compel them to release the tape, right? But at the end of the day, the sheriff could release the tape whenever they want, right? And then the sheriff was like, well, we, we can't do it because, uh, you know, the investigate, oh, wait, no, they, they say, okay, well, we, we can't do it because it's, uh, uh, you know, it's it's illegal. And then they, they point at the fucking North Carolina code and then the North Carolina code says, uh, 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 right? Like, but that's, you know, right? And so like, there's always an excuse. They will always find another entity, another organization, another rule somewhere as an excuse. But when the rules, like for example, uh, we had someone speak uh, who was, I believe, working with the NAACP, uh, someone speak and list out general statutes for the Pasquotank County Sheriff's Department. And the Pasquotank County Sheriff's Department li like explicitly outlaws lethal force uh, when serving an arrest warrant. Like they actually, like the North Carolina law, North Carolina law says that lethal force when serving an arrest warrant is okay, right? Depending on imminent danger and all that other stuff, right? But you know, that's vague. You can argue that in court, right? But the Pasquotank County Sheriff their own rule book says that lethal force is not allowed when serving an arrest warrant, right? So that rule doesn't matter. And this is what I've been saying is that like, for example, I had, here's a funny story. I had someone from NPR interview me a couple days ago. Um, and this person uh, was like, oh, well, how do you feel about the releasing of the tape? Now you should know that the law in North Carolina says that the tape can't be released. And so my response to them, and I don't know if I told this story, but I'm going to tell it again. So I responded to them with, with uh, well, it's also illegal to run in and murder people in a school zone, but they don't really care about law and order then. When it comes to copying and pasting a video file, oh, sorry, can't do it. 
law and order when it comes to ending the life of a human being, a father of seven children. Sorry, law? Order? What order? What law? Oh, our own rules? The laws that I wrote myself with my own hand? Oh, sorry. Don't know about that. I have no idea. Right? And so then the NPR lady, this is a couple days ago, but then the NPR lady was like, well, how do you feel about, uh, you know, the judge? Do you think the judge and the district attorney should recuse themselves? And I said, not only should they recuse themselves, but they should be sent to prison. And then the NPR lady, like, you know, she has like one of those tape recorders. She just like takes it away and turns it off and walks away from me. <laughs> like, she, not, she like, I like, I shit you not. Like, there was no like, okay, thank you for that. Or like, no, like, all right, have a good day. She just like pulls the tape recorder and walks away from me. Like, it's so awkward. So weird. Right. But again, um, people really need to understand, right? They broke the law when they killed Andrew Brown. They broke the motherfucking law. The law is not sacrosanct, right? So like, again, right, if you're in a position, all right, law and order, all right, law, and, that's your position. You kill someone. So the law has been violated. There is no more law and order. You can't just bring law and order back when it comes to copying and pasting a video file. What? Right? Like, okay, the law and the order has been broken. The law is, is, is in tatters. Order is, has, there is no order. It's chaos now. So the only way, like, at that point, there is no law and order. So, you, like, why, like, I, I don't understand. If you're saying that the law is sacrosanct, then you wouldn't have killed Andrew Brown. Right? You can't release the goddamn tape because of some stupid rule. But also, the more enforceable rules, rules that you written, like, you wrote yourself say that you shouldn't have even been there in the first place. You shouldn't have even had assault weapons in the first place. You shouldn't have even killed Andrew in the first place. So again, it's a pick and choose scenario. So when someone says, oh, North Carolina law, go fuck yourself. Like I'm gonna shove that law in your face and I want you to fucking, you know, like be uncomfortable with that because you're a fucking idiot, right? I, I, so I just want everyone to know, I wanted to take this recap segment to get, you know, to pepper in a little bit more, uh, you know, what we're doing here. And again, so this was day 26. So I want to like let everyone know, day 26. Day 26. We have been protesting for nearly four straight weeks. That's a picture of me. Day 26, folks. Isn't that crazy? Everyone nowhere closer. Think about that. We are nowhere closer to getting what we want. And I'm just going to let you know, and people need to understand this, because the sooner they understand this, the sooner we can start planning other things, right? So for example right the county all the gov the elected officials like i said will always make the worst decision possible right so when you expect a decision to be made like a judge ruling or like the sheriff is going to do a press conference right when you when you have to expect the worst possible scenario and you have to know what the worst possible scenario is so like something I like to do is like whenever someone says that like I hope an elected official, there is no hope. That's not happening. Don't hope. Because when you hope, that puts you in a different m method of thinking. You're no longer thinking about protesting the government. You're thinking about the government helping you. You're thinking about the government being on your side. That's not going to happen. The government, you're protesting the government because the government doesn't work. If the government worked, you wouldn't be protesting, right? So like people really need to like just there is no elected official that's going to save us. It's not going to happen. Now, there can be elected officials that support us, right? But the system is, is designed in such a way that those single elected officials have no power, right? And even if they did gain power, let's say in the city, even if they did gain power, there would always be stop gaps when it comes to the county, when it comes to the state, so that, you know, to prevent them from enforcing or putting through radical politics, right? And so, like, and that's what you really need to understand here. Um... But again, uh, we're organizing for the long haul. There are some other things that are happening behind the scenes. Um, mostly when it comes to, you know, group chats. We got we have people talking. We have people, uh, you know, that are discussing things with each other. Uh, people, and really the biggest thing, um, the biggest thing about the movement in Elizabeth City that is beneficial and that needs to, like, not be misunderstood is that people are organizing every single day. And that's so fucking valuable because look at all, like there's so many cities, there's so many towns, there's so many things that happen where eventually you have a point where the community breaks up and the protests stop. Now, now there's a lot of cities that have done 26 straight days of protesting, right? Now, now I want to also say that Elizabeth City has been historically, like, like a historically peaceful protesting. This has been very shockingly nonviolent and historically peaceful.
for 26 straight days and nothing has happened. So I, again, I want to let everyone know, like, yes, we've done all the rules. We followed all the laws. We did everything the right way. Guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing has happened. Not a single thing has happened. Right. And so I want that to be and you can you can draw your own conclusions from that. 26 days of nonviolent protesting and we're in a worse position than when we started, right? Or at least equally bad, right? So I just like, again, but again, that's in the terms of government. That's in the terms of government. Now, what has improved tremendously, what has actually had tangible progress, and this is why I need, uh, like I want people to reorient how they view goals. Your goal should not be to have the release the tape. Now, yes, your demand should be of the government for them to release the tapes. Absolutely. But your goal of the protest should not be to release the tapes. Because again, the tapes aren't going to be released. And once they're released, then what? Right? And so you don't want to set up these short-term goals. Now, you want them to be demands. Again, you want the government to know that this is what you want. But you need to have internal goals as well. And internal goals should be revolving around, like, you know, meeting new people. They should be revolving around organizing for the long term. They should be revolving around, you know, making new friends. They should be revolving around, you know, just like, you know, learning the layout of your city. They should be revolving around educating one another. They should be resolve revolving around, like, again, yesterday we had people bring food and water and snacks. And we had people feeding one another, like, taking care of, like, pe like you know, like, if someone, you know, can't pay their light bill and they've got, like, 18 people they can call that maybe can chip in $10 each, right? Like that's the kind of community organizing that needs to happen that has been, again, historically destroyed and just ripped apart since the 1950s and 60s. Social movements have been ripped apart into non-existence. They don't exist anymore, right? Like they're just, they're gone. Like if you can go out to a protest and not know anyone out there who's with you, that's a problem. And that's what the government needs, right? That's what they, they need people to be atomized. And so again, we need to have internal goals and we have need to have external demands when it comes to protesting and organizing. Internal goals, grow numbers, you know, become more, you know, aware of one another, you know, train one another and like help on prop up each other's weaknesses, you know, give one another mutual aid in terms of like food, housing, shelter. If someone is cold, you know, and you have an extra jacket, give them, you know, like that kind of stuff, making sure that your fellow human is okay, making sure that their well-being is taken care of. Because again, the government is not going to do so. Their role, look at the, the system, look at the, the hospitals in this country. You have to pay to use them. What kind of fucking bullshit is that? What is that? You have to pay to use a fucking hospital? What? What? Right? So again, the whole system of governance in this country is not designed to govern. It is designed to obstruct. It is designed to prevent progress. And so, but you can do that outside of government. You can progress outside of government. You don't need government to provide mutual aid programs. Uh, you don't need government to help people pay their electricity bills. You don't need government to help people, uh, you know, who are starving have food to eat at night. You don't need a government to help people, uh, you know, who maybe don't have a place to sleep, have a place to sleep at night when it gets cold out, right? You don't need government for that, right? And the government is there to prevent you from realizing that you don't need government from that. Once you realize, oh shit, we have a group of 300 people here and together our resources are enough to help one another, right? Once you people realize that, it's a slippery motherfucking slope. And that's why, that's why the Elizabeth City protests have been, in my opinion, so successful so far. Because as far as internal goals of community organizing and getting together and like growing in numbers, we have had people like, you know, on the first week, I knew almost nobody at the protest. Now I know almost everybody. I've had personal conversations with almost everybody who attends every single protest, right? And every time I see someone who's like, you know, popping up for the third, fourth day, and I don't really know them yet, I'll try to have a conversation with them because it's about like, you know, even if you just have a conversation, just knowing people more makes you more comfortable. And that's really the thing you need to understand. Because again, the role of government is to make you uncomfortable. The role of government is to, uh, you know, obstruct the role of government is to provide scapegoats. The role of government is to make people hate government, right? People think, oh, I hate politics because the government sucks. What? You hate politics because the government sucks. Okay, you should like politics because the government sucks. The government sucking is specifically designed to get people like you to tune out, right? They want you to not think, oh, politics, politics. 
homeless people, whatever. The government could fix it. They don't. Therefore, homeless people, whatever. No, 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 no. If the government doesn't fix something, you should fucking fix something. That's how that's how this fucking world should work. And I think that in Elizabeth City, that is happening, right? That is how people are realizing, oh, shit, we don't need the government. People are, you know, like, you know, so and that's kind of what we're doing here. Um, and so I just wanted to provide that little bit of like, you know, message, uh, historical context, you know, uh, that kind of a stuff. And uh, again, we are organizing for the long term, right? Like the protests here might not seem radical in nature, uh, but radical protests often don't get anything to change, right? Now they can be cool, like showing severe signs of resistance can be good, right? But like also, if you're in jail for four days, that's four days where you can't be organizing that kind of stuff. And you know what I mean? So it's like, and that's what they want. And so like I, now there's pros and cons to all sorts of styles of resistance. And I'm not going to like say that other people resisting uh, in other ways is problematic. I, you know, if you want to fucking, you know, certain buildings on what, like if that's your, if that's how you resist, I'm right there with you. I support you in your role uh, to resist and to, uh, you know, go against the government and to the uh, go against the system that oppresses us. Right. So I'm 100 percent right there with you. But again, every context is different. Elizabeth City would not be better served if we burned a building to the ground. Right. So there are cities, there are, you know, like towns, there are communities where that could be the way that you protest and there could be the most strategic and best way to resist. That is not an Elizabeth City. Elizabeth City is a small town, right? So like we, we protest differently here. And that's not to say that, you know, we should have a more liberal like protest. I think that we should have a radical protest. We should have a very radical protest filled with very radical demands, right? And it's getting there, right? Like uh, like three weeks ago, right, people were saying, oh, I like the local police. Uh, the local police hasn't really given me that many problems. Now, People hate the local police, right? And that's that's the thing is like that right there is a win, right? If nothing else happens, right? If nothing else happens and the protests stop today, right? You are going to have people, right? That three weeks ago kind of liked the cops who now don't like the cops. You know what I mean? And so like we're having like things are getting more radical even if it doesn't look like that on the surface, I can assure you that people are getting more fed up. People are researching more about how government works. People are realizing how bad government is. People are realizing how bad these institutions are, right? So whether or not it's immediately like, you know, visible, right? You know, we're baking it into the cake. And so there could be a moment where like day, you know, 57, for example, let's say day 57, right? A month from now or so, right? Let's say something happens and we do have a more radical or maybe potentially, you know, like, you know, like a different style of protest or resistance. And that could happen out of this movement. Right. And so that's what you have to understand. Elizabeth City does not have a huge history of organizing, at least, you know, since I've lived here for about almost three years. Right. And so, like, you have to build things up from the ground. You can't have a successful resistance if like 80 percent of the population thinks that there's some good cops. Right. You just can't do it. Right. But you can have a successful form of resistance that it takes a different method um, if 80 percent of the, of the community thinks that all cops are bastards. Right. Or like along the lines, you know, like so that's what I'm trying to say. We are in this part right now in the protesting where people are learning. People are educating themselves. Right. Not everyone goes to protest. Not everyone knows a lot of this stuff. So people are educating themselves. People are learning more about the way that the system of the government works. People are learning more about the local elected officials. People are learning more about local government. People are learning more about the history of the city. And that right there has value uh, and information. Right. That is going to propel every single day that you have that information. Right. You are going to be a better actor as a result. Right. So like every single day that you know that there is no such thing as a good cop, you're going to be acting in such a way that is going to provide a more radical form of resistance. You're going to educate more people. You're going to provide like you you're just your, your frame of mind. The way you go about the you know living day to day is going to be more radical once you realize that there's no such thing as a good cop. Once you realize that the system is what's broken and those who enforce that system's, uh, you know, place in the world. Once you realize that that's the case and that there is no such thing as a good cop, right? How can, okay, okay, there's a good cop now. Okay, what do they do? Oh, they arrested someone for marijuana. But they're a good cop, I promise. Oh, they just gave someone a, a, a bullshit speeding ticket for being two uh, miles of it. Oh, they just, did, oh, but they're a good cop. No, I no, they're my brother. They're a good cop. Oh, they just, you know, assassinated someone in a school zone. But they're still a good cop, I promise you. They're good, right? No, 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 no. 
if you uphold the system and the system is unjust, you are unjust, plain and motherfucking simple. Now, you can be a better actor in that system than other people. And yes, it is a sliding scale. There can be better cops and there could be worse cops, but there are no good cops. And that needs to be understood. Uh, but anyway, uh, that was day 26 recap. I wanted to pepper in some, you know, basic, uh, you know, theory and then, you know, some more uh, outside context uh, because, you know, this has been happening for a while now. And not everyone that lives here, you know, really fully understands exactly what's going on. So I just wanted to, you know, provide a little bit of a, a vibe check. Um, and so, again, these things take time. Uh, and, you know, we're learning. People are learning. People are becoming more radicalized. And, again, there could be a situation where day 69, right, something happens. And that's the day where, you know, we, we reorient the whole entire movement, right? And so, like, that, like, you have to, uh, you know, account for that. So... Just throwing that out there, uh, and there you go. There's That's the Day 26 recap segment. Bada boom. I feel isolated locally. I live in a pro-cop red Q town. You see, Afraid Not, I thought that 27 days ago. If you would have asked me 27 days ago, right? I would have been like, I live in bumfuck motherfuck right and so like maybe there are people that live next to you that agree with you but you have no way of communicating with them and so like that you know consider that possibility and consider what you can do that doesn't involve having a community member being shot and killed by a fucking slave patrol consider what you can do right that would help bring those people together Right? Like, that's the kind of stuff. And I'm not, you know, you don't have to be the main character here. You can just wait for someone else to do that, maybe. But I'm just throwing that out there. How democratic is your organizing? Um, as, small, as far as, like, people voting and then, like, deciding things, uh, it was more democratic uh, on the first week or so. Uh, there are people that have appointed themselves as leaders. However... Um, they also, uh, give people a platform whenever people want. So like, if you want a megaphone and a so-called leader has one, they will always give you the megaphone. Right. Uh, but ever since we did like the permit bullshit, um, you know, it's, it's been way less democratic when it comes to marching. Uh, but when it comes to other things, people's input is very highly valued. And then also, uh, when it comes to, uh, I guess it, it is still democratic. It's just not as in, it's not as spontaneous. So like before, on the first couple of days of protesting, we would decide like intersection um, uh, by intersection which direction we go. Now we have the routes because of the permit shit. We have routes planned a day in advance, um, and so like but you know those routes are democratically decided upon at the end of the previous day, right? So it's like okay. Um, and so when I say the people have appointed themselves as leaders, those are just the people that are doing the paperwork. Those are just the people that are, you know, you know, for example, we have someone that has a bus now and they like have a bus that follows the protest. So if someone like has heat stroke or whatever and needs like a cool place, whatever, we've got a bus, we've got ice packs, we've got medical su uh, supplies and stuff. Um, right. And so like, that's the kind of thing, you know, and so like, and not everyone is good at public speaking. And that's another thing that you need to understand. Like, you know, not everyone is great at, pu like, I'm not that great at public speaking. I'm good at podcasting. I am maybe good at words, but I'm not great at public speaking. And so I don't want to be in a position where I'm on a megaphone, like, you know, talking like I am right now. I don't want to be in that position, right? So I would rather, you know, push people slightly in that direction that are good at public speaking, push them in that direction if I can. And then they do, you know, my, they do my bidding. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, like, that's like, everyone has their weaknesses and everyone has their strengths. And that, and so that's, that's been, I think it's been pretty decent. Now we've had some disagreements, but those disagreements haven't been like, you know, we don't hate each other. No one hates anyone. Um, and so like disagreements are handled democratically and people like air their grievances, like, and how the government should work. Right. So like if someone does something that other people disagree with, we say we disagree. And then the person's like, okay, what are we going to do tomorrow? Right. That's how the government should work. That's how the fucking First Amendment was designed. Was that if people collectively had grievances, they protest the government, make their grievances known, and the government's supposed to respond in, in, in turn. But we don't live in that system. Right? You need, like, we just don't live in that system. And so what we are doing is we are trying to make our community organizing representative 
of the system that we want to be in place uh, and governmentally. And so like, yes, there are people that, you know, I've taken the, le the leadership role, but they're not the people that are going to like talk over people. Right? They're going to be the people that says, all right, what do you think about this? What should we do tomorrow? What do you think we should do tomorrow? Like, what do you think we should have done better today? And that kind of stuff. And that's the important part. But anyway, does anyone have any more questions?